Now that we have our piston together, let's go ahead and look at IDWs. So I'm going to go to New, and this time we'll choose a drawing. Actually, I'm going to click on New and make sure that we have the correct English template for this. So coming down, default is inches, IDW, and this is where we're going to add dimensions to this thing. Creating the template, unfortunately, it defaults to this rather large sheet. So I'm going to right click, edit sheet, changing the size of this thing to a standard A piece of paper. There's eight and a half by 11 here in America. It's a different size piece of paper, other parts of the world. It comes with default title block and default border as well. I'm going to come up here and show you how to make your own border. So this is zone borders. And if you have a huge poster that you want to find something on there, you can define zones, kind of break it into grids. So numbers and alphabets. So you can say, oh, go to... C3, and that will be where it is on the poster. So you can, you can play around with that. Finish sketch, and I will name my border 4x4, four four because that's, I have 4 and A, B, C, D. Save, and now I can right-click on this, insert that into my sheet. Okay, for the title block. Here's my large title block, or you can you can see the standard one for A. Let's go ahead and insert that. This is kind of interesting. You see that it actually pulled in my username. It pulled in today's date automatically on here. It has what's called eye properties and field text. And I can come in here, right click, edit field text, and fill in every time it goes through our vision, every time somebody checks it. So company name, title, sheet size, part number. So it has kind of a, a standard thing. Some of these, like the initial scale, this will automatically fill in when I pull in my part, which is kind of neat. So you can, you can look at their default title block. I would actually like to show you how to make your own title block that will pull in eye properties and part properties. So I'm going to go ahead and um, we'll delete this off of here. So right click, delete, and under title block, I'm going to go ahead and say define a new title block. It pulls us into sketching area here, and you can make rectangles, fill those rectangles with text, similar that we did in AutoCAD. So I'm going to just make a few boxes here. Let's see, we'll do similar size, 2 by 0.375 inches. And I'm going to just copy this box using the lower right-hand corner as my base point. And we'll start with one right here in the corner. And just put a couple of areas here to fill in name, date, Anything else you want to do? It'd be really fun if you made your own personal logo to have an area over here to, to put your logo on there as well. Okay, filling text into this. So I'm going to go ahead and click on text and make a box in here. There's a few formatting features. You can center it left to right, center it up and down, set your font size. Rather than typing text in, I'm actually going to come over here to the model properties. And this is where I can automatically bring in the author of who made that. Now, 
there's this one little add text parameter. Make sure you click this. It'll show up over here. I'm going to bump that text size up a little bit. So this will automatically bring in the name of whoever created the part. Creating another text box and exploring some of the other pieces of information that can be automatically pulled in. So there was the author and we can, if we have multiple pages, we can give it page numbers, sheet properties, initial view scale. This will be something good to pull in. And I'm gonna actually add some text to this as well. So that when it has that information, I'll have what those numbers are on there. Oh, I didn't get it centered. If you ever need to modify, just double click. There's centered and centered. That looks a little better. Creating another text box. And I'll be sure to center, center. And for this, let's go ahead and pull in the, let's see if we can find, yeah, creation date. Drawing properties, creation date. That will be good to pull in right under the author. Another thing you can do, if it doesn't have the information you want in there, you can actually create your own prompted entry, is what this is. And you can fill in whatever text you want the user to fill in. So you can say, something like class name or company name, and this will make the user fill that information in and it will pull it into your title block for you. So, so very nice. Okay, fill this in with whatever else you think would be useful and just spend a little bit of time exploring the eye properties and um, all of the, the information that is in here. One last thing, let's go ahead and fill in a logo. And I went ahead and created one out of my initials. That would be really great if you guys created your own kind of tag or your own logo as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert this as an image and I'll resize it so that it's the same size as the rest of my text. Going ahead and deleting out that old size so you can make this any size you want line it up in there and that'll just be kind of a a nice final touch on here if you want to play around with making your logo so i made this thing in inventor it will extrude letters so i sketched this as text and edited the text a little bit played around with some of the shadows and things under the view tab if you make a personal logo, it doesn't have to be your initials. It could be anything at all, but that would be really fun, something to throw in your title block. Okay, go ahead and finish out the sketch. It will ask you to save, and you can fill in a name. Then look underneath your title blocks, and you can insert that into your sheet. Fill in any prompted properties it asks for, and there you go. You've got your title block set up. Next, we're going to place view, base, choose the file location of the part you would like to dimension, choose the orientation for your lower left-hand corner, choose the scale that's going to work best, say OK. You can move this into place by grabbing it on the edge where the dashed line is. Once you have that corner view in place, go ahead and 
create the presented view. So here is the top view, the right hand view, and click to place it. Click, right click, create. There are sectional as well as auxiliary views, very similar to AutoCAD. So you're going to select the view you're interested in creating a sectional view for, pull that out, right click, continue, and pull that down from the parent view. You can then click on the labels and rearrange those. Also, for features that are really small that you would like to zoom in on, there's a detailed view. So I'm gonna click on detailed view, click on where I'm gonna do that for. You can have a circle or a rectangle. I'm gonna go ahead and click a rectangle you're going to click on the middle of the view and then zoom in on the spot you would like to enlarge. And then you can move that view around. So again, click on the edge of this. You can move the label around. You can grab these little green nubs, also the center and position that a little bit better. If you right click on that and say edit view, you can come back and change anything you want. So let's say instead of 1.5 to one, let's say you wanna bump that up to be a little bit larger, two to one. So anything you wanna change, just right click on it. Okay, so now that all of our views are in place, we can go over to annotate and dimension. Whatever you click on, it will detect what you click on and dimension accordingly. So here we have a circle and it is telling us what the diameter of that circle is. It will also pop up with a menu that gives you dimension styles. You can change the precision, so how many decimal places are showing up on that number. We'll add tolerances later on while you're working on your project, but have a look around at all of the different formatting features. If you want to add a note, maybe the same dimension shows up in multiple places, so you could add a note in here next to that number. Okay, so go ahead and hit OK. If you ever want to change that, click on the dimension. The same menu will pop back up again, and you can edit as you go and as you need. Let's go ahead and look at some of these linear dimensions. So move labels out of the way, and this is going to be pretty tricky. There's so many little features. So popping out that precision until we get the right number of significant figures. And right now I'm not going to line these up. I will show you a tool in the future that will line these all up for you. So just getting the numbers in here right, right now, making sure that each one has enough decimal places that it's showing how many inches it is with some nice clear numbers that are, are not rounded. Last one, and again, these are not lined up with one another, but I'll show you that arranging tool. Okay, so the numbers are kind of all over the place. I'm gonna hit arrange, and this will help us take all of those and put them all in a row that are lined up with one another. So click Arrange and then click Dimension, after Dimension, after Dimension. When you're done, right click and go ahead and line those up. 
Now you can see that there's not enough room in this view. They're all on top of one another. So I'm going to right click and edit the view and change the scale. I'm going to make this really big so that there's enough room to get in there and see all the details. For all of this, it's going to be up to you to decide what's going to be the most clear way to show what is happening in your part. So experiment with it, move things around, resize as you go. And the goal is just to get something in here as clearly as possible. Okay, so I'll go ahead and keep dimensioning a few things. Let me know if um, questions over this and hopefully this will be kind of a fun thing to explore. As we create future parts, the dimensions of the connecting rod, the crankshaft, the engine block, everything is going to come back to the dimensions we've already created in this piston. So the wrist pin is going to have to fit in the piston. This is going to be the top of the connecting rod. And even thinking through how much room that connecting rod has to move around in there as the crankshaft pulls it around, how long the stroke length is going to be for the borehole in the engine block. So the more familiar you are with these dimensions, the more quickly the future pieces are going to come together for you so that when we get up to the assembly, everything is going to fit perfectly and snugly. So take your time, really do a good job. Make sure you have at least all of the major features in this dimensioned out.